This man needs no introduction. You all know him as Mark Painter, the guru when it comes to practice management, coding, and billing in urology. I'm extremely grateful that he is taking the time to tell us something that he has encountered many, many times because everyone asks him the same questions. So thank you so much for allowing me to interview you. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you down here in yeah, California. Yeah. So, so we did a, we did a, a three-hour gig this afternoon talking about practice management. Uh, we talked about RVUs and stuff like that. And in our conversation, uh, you mentioned that a lot of people ask you the same questions over and over regarding stones. And what is it that you want to share with us? So it, once again, the, you know, we've written many articles on stones and, and how to code for stones and specifically using the scope for the going after yeah. stones, your reader scope. So um, I, I had it once again, um, actually two different practices and two different individuals like, how do we deal with stones? When can we bill for multiple codes? And, you know, the one that kept, that probably comes up more than anything else as far as one of the scenarios is there's a stone in the ureter they push it up into the kidney, then they laser it, and then they place a stent. Uh, you know, can I use the manipulation code, the laser code, and the stent placement code? Or what should I do? And, and so we, I've, I've tried to boil it down. You know, we've been through this a million times as we put it through the articles in Neurology Times and put cheat sheets together. And at least this time, I think I got through with this one group saying, listen, <laughs> If it's one stone in the preoperative diagnosis, it's probably only one code. Um, and in that, this circumstance, it is one code. That if you push it, zap it, and then put a stent in, the 52356 is all you can do. So um, the fact that you, know, you moved it doesn't really count, even though it may be different instrumentation. Now, if you had two stones previous, before you started, and you treated each one of those differently, then now you can think about maybe using two codes because it's two stones. But one stone, one code is probably one, uh, one way to look at it most of the time. So the, in, this, in this scenario where you have two stones in two different locations, it is important to realize that you have to consider using a modifier. Exactly. And depending on the payer, it could be an X modifier or something else. Oh yeah, or a 59. Yeah. An XS or a, or a 59. Yeah. And, uh, but don't even think about it unless you got two stones. Yeah. So um, hopefully one day everybody will get it. Um, I think most people are, are pretty good um, at understanding exactly what to do. But I can't tell you, I, I, I think we've written about it. I think we've solved it. But then again, here comes Somebody the question every time. So. <laughs> but you know what? It is easier to ask you than to have to read it yourself. We're all lazy. We just want to get the answers. Yeah, I, I, and I appreciate that, and, and I'm happy to answer it again. Don't get me wrong. I, but mainly, it's kind of nice to put it out here, so hopefully people can circle back, and if they have the question, um, they can get it fast here if they can't get a hold of me. But we're always happy to help when we can. Well, you, tomorrow you are giving tips and suggestions that every urology practice should be doing uh, in, a, in a lecture tomorrow, right? Yeah, so every year at the Western section, and, it, and it's been now several years, and I hate to admit how long, cause, and actually I don't remember how long I've been coming, but uh, we actually do the top 10 urology uh, tips uh, for the upcoming year. Um, and in fact, right now I'm running upstairs. I got to parse through the 1,700 pages of the final rule and see if there's anything new out there. Uh, that we can bring next uh, tomorrow and of course I won't make it all the way through so we'll have to push a lot of that stuff online and, and we'll summarize it in the Urology Times article again. Um, so trying to get all that stuff and get it out there so everybody's ready for 2020 and then we do know 2021 is going to be a big shift in E&M codes. Big time. So we're going to end up having to deal with that. We're, we're going to talk about that at the Urology uh, Coding and Reimbursement Seminar in Vegas and then again in in uh, New Orleans, but I think we're really going to have to do a little bit more um, over the year. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that your EHR is set up right now, just revolving around everything they have to do for history and physical exam. And it's, it's, you're not going to need it 
as you go into that. And then in 2021, so, in 2021 right. so everybody's got to get ready to gear up and maybe change their templates. Um, and then I, I think the other piece that's, that's going to be interesting is they're changing the way time is going to be counted. Um, not only are they going to take away the 50% rule for counseling and coordination of care, but they're also taking away the face-to-face -face and allowing you to bill for time that's spent throughout the day in dealing with different things. So um, I, there's going to be, like, how does that get documented? How do you track all that? And how I mean, you're going to have to stop, watch your life. It's going to be, so we've got to get all that stuff figured out. And the CPT book is changing. So this isn't just about Medicare rules. It's about all payers. And then they did actually redact or take back that they were going to collapse everything into three payment three codes, yeah. it's it's still going to be but it's going to be four four, four new four, four new and we'll still have the fifth one for the established but it's the, you know the the fifth one is the nursing code so it's really four in right. each category right so it's gonna be interesting. In some ways, it's simpler. In some ways, it's uh, more compli complicated. And it it just never fails to amaze me how you can come back year after year talking pretty much about the same things. And yet, it's different. It's new. Yeah, I mean, when you look at at, at partially, it's as my dad always said. It's it's pretty amazing. You don't really have to change the questions because the questions are the same. But because they're rotating the rules around and changing it, the answers do change a little bit. And and because of that, it actually changes the approach uh, to what you need to do, what you need to record, how do you score it, how to prepare for audits, how to deal with all of that. So it's, uh, it, it's constantly changing. It's nuances here and there. You know, if you stay on top of it, it's just tweaks here and there. But you then you got your new guys coming in that are just lost with all of that, so. Yeah, but those little tweaks can mean a lot of revenue for urology practices. Yes, absolutely. Let me see who has any questions. Uh, can you ask about amount of data, hormone workup with 30 plus labs, but no x-ray, does it only count as one? So Dr. Nelson is asking about the uh, data section in medical decision making. So, um, Actually, I'm, I'm in the process right now of writing a, a new article on amount of data. Um, there's a couple of things that we look at with data. So number one, and as I've been going through and writing this, we have probably three main scoring systems that are used by auditors. You've got the Marshfield Clinic scoring system, Trailblazers put out a scoring system, and then you know the PRS scoring system. And of course, we're partial to the PRS system because it was you know designed and developed for urology and really tries to make more sense about all of this. So in the PRS system, uh, what we count as data in a review sec uh, in a review process in medical decision making is every CPT code result that is clearly used to make decisions about treatment. So if you not only you put it in the data, but it's we've now found it, that you need to really put it in the the assessment plan portion of it that the based on this, session, yeah. yeah, based on the PVR retention, blah, blah, blah. Um, every CPT code counts as a point, right? So ultimately, if you had a Chem 7 panel, so you got seven different chemicals, it's one CPT code, so it's one point, versus a UA and a culture and sensitivity, two different CPT codes, two points. Um, unlike, and th now that's the review side, now, ordering them, you collapse them by category. So if you ordered a Chem 7, a UA, and a culture and sensitivity, all of those are in the same section of CPT. So that's only worth one point on the ordering side. But it is, it is a point that, that you do add on uh, for amount of data. Um, the other thing we're, we're trying to get ready to address, and I'm gonna, I'm I've been bouncing this off a number of folks as we're looking for the changes in CPT, but data is now expanding as to how it's coming to you. Um, so we're actually start. I'm getting ready to move away from a system that purely counts everything on straight CPT codes as data, um, but now comes in because we've got you know these smart watches and you've got Bluetooth technology and we've got new you know Bluetooth Euro or Euroflows and we've got Bluetooth bladder diaries, which used to actually count as subjective information from the patient, so it counted as history. Well, if it comes through an FDA-approved device to you through an app data. and a HIPAA, now it's data. 
So we've got to evolve the E and M um, scoring system to match with the technology that's there. So, so we've got some changes coming up with data. Um, so yeah, so if you've got 30 plus labs, if it's actually one CPT code um, as far as results, then you count it as one point. But ultimately, um, it, you know, you can count each different CPT code as a point in the medical decision making. So there you go, uh, Roscoe. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan, thank you. And Dor thank says uh, thanks, uh, John and Mark, for sharing this. You are the lifelines for us all. Uh, certainly, this guy and his pra his business has made me quite a lot of money and uh, made me practice a lot happier. That is for sure. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate it, and certainly appreciate a few of you spending some time with us on a Friday night. <laughs> so, is it Friday uh, or Saturday? It, oh, I guess it is Saturday. Oh, it is Saturday. Okay. I, I have, travel I guess, so much. I have no idea. I don't know what time zone I have. And do we switch time zones to, or times tonight? I don't. I don't really know. I have I to look. I, up, I look have to look up. I think look we it do. up on Google. Yeah. So. There you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Believe it or not, this guy is not on Facebook. I'm trying to push him to join Facebook. So any questions, leave them in the comments, and I will try to link the write-up that you did on Coding for Stones in the video description. So, All right. Thanks, John. Appreciate all the help. Have a good night. And we'll see you in Vegas, hopefully.